said, I want you, Danny. And I, not, I'm not talking about being saved. I'm talking about to serve him, to preach, to do something for him. The Lord wants you. My pastor said God never made a possum that he didn't have a tree for him to climb. God never made a rabbit he didn't have a hole for him to go in. And God never made a Christian that he didn't have something that he wanted that person to do. The Lord wants you. And if you are not actively involved in the service of the Lord, you, my friend, are not right with God. The greatest, two greatest things in the world are, number one, be saved and know it. Number two, be in the will of God and know it. And if you know that, you know more than 90% of the people in this world. I want to say three things really quick, and we'll go. you still got time to get your ice cream. You're going to have three hamburgers each tomorrow and four hot dogs and cake, so it wouldn't hurt you to do without a little bit tonight. Now, I want to say this tonight. First of all, the Lord wants you to bring others to Him. The Lord wants you to bring others to Him. Not just some crazy fanatic with bumper stickers on their car that don't know no better. Not just people like, like Chad and his family. Some, some Christians actually look at y'all and they think, oh my goodness, them people, they, 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 listen buddy, it, it, I would to God that all God's people uh, would cover, put bumper stickers in their car and give out tracts. And I, don't you think that's a little overboard? Well, I think it, most of you are underboard, that's for sure. Amen. I'd rather go overboard for the Lord than underboard and not go at all. And I'm telling you tonight, the Lord wants you to bring souls to Him. I like what He said about going over there and getting that little girl, going way down there and getting that little kid, 40 miles over to get this and 40 miles. Listen, every child shouldn't be mean to us just like it was our child. Just like it was our grandchild. I thought, man, if I die and go to heaven one of these days and I look down from heaven, the Lord, if the Lord let me do that, and I seen my, one of my kids or my grandkids over there, I sure wish somebody would care enough to that, about them to go where they're at. Knock on their door saying, look, the Lord loves you. He wants to, he wants to help you. Give them a track. Get them to church. And just go, 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 get them, go, get them, go, get them, go, get them. That's why we run buses. You say you got some buses you don't need? Oh, hallelujah. I felt something when he said that, didn't y'all? I felt it right there in my soul. Uh, one of our workers, where you at, Miss Blanca? Where you at? Uh, raise your hand. Miss Blanca right back there just sent me a text last night. Said that we need to start a Glen Alpine right, route. And there's the bus. And right in here sits the captain and the driver. If you just say, there lies the Lord wants you. The Lord wants you. I never hey, tell that story. Uh, it sticks out in my mind. I heard a lot of them uh, bus kid stories. He said, uh, I told you before, he said, uh, uh, they, they, run, they run a huge bus ministry and run probably 1,500, 2,000 in the church. Great big gigantic bus ministry. Run them kids every Sunday. And I mean, you start getting that money, you got, I mean, you got to have some structure. Uh, you got to have some uh, uh, organization, the more people you got. And, uh, and they bring them bus kids in there like that. And he said, uh, he said, uh, bus kids was running everywhere, running out in the yard, playing, climbing trees and, and everything else. And, and you know how they'll do. And he said, we got, we got to get a grip. So he met with all these deacons. And he had about 15 or 20 deacons, I think. He said, now deacons, I'm going to sign each one of you a certain area of the parking lot of the building. And it is your job to make sure there's no kid like out here over there. And if you see a kid out here just running around, uh, you grab them and bring them right in here and set them right down on the front row. That's their punishment uh, for being out there. They're going to sit in here in the main service, not in the junior church, set them down right there. And uh, uh, he said that went pretty good there for a few Sundays. And he said all of a sudden, one Sunday morning, he said he's up preaching. He said he is up there getting in the Word of God. He just getting started in money. About that time, the side door opened. Here come one of his deacons. Had two little old toe head up boys about that high. And he just dragging them in like that right there. And he brought them both in like that right there. Marched them in there. Set them down on the front row. Said, don't you dare. Them. They sit there like this. About, there's the sheriff's office. And they sit there like that. And he said he preached. He said he hauled off. He preached hellfire damnation up one side and down the other. He preached on the drink judgment day. I he preached on the lake of fire. He pre, ah, Lord, he he done everything. And he said he gave the invitation. 
And uh, people started coming here, coming there. And them two little boys came and got saved. And somebody led them to the Lord right there. Got saved by the grace of God. And he said, uh, uh, he got up there and he said, now boys, uh, what they do in them big churches like that, they, uh, uh, those, those big independent churches like that, they, they go ahead and have them baptized right on the spot. I mean, they get them signed up for the sword of the Lord, give them a King James Bible, uh, give them a bunch of tracts and everything. I mean, they're signed up and baptized and sealed, joined the church and everything else. Wham! All in one day. So they got them little boys back there and they lined them up and they come up them steps, got into the baptistry. I baptize this, my brother. Boom. I baptize this, my brother. Boom. And got them baptized and they got them down there. And, and before they left, the bus worker said, Now, now, uh, do you boys have anything to say uh, where, where you, before you leave? And they said, uh, Yes, sir. Uh, can we go now? He said, Wait a minute. Which, which bus did you come on? They said, We didn't come on the bus. He said, Mama sent us to the store and we was coming, to, we was coming across the truck parking lot and this man grabbed us and drug us in here. <laughs> and and I'm there. Mother, I said, I said, hallelujah. That's the way it's supposed to work. Ain't that right? Let's, God can't even walk down the street without somebody grabbing you, taking you to the house of God, telling you about Jesus, telling you the greatest story ever told. Hallelujah. The Lord wants you. Bring somebody to him. Anthony, he, he's gone this evening to see his family over in, in uh, Knoxville. He, but he run his bus, run his bus, done his job, done his duty, and then took off to Knoxville to see his family. <laughs> he's got a little boy. I don't even know. I think one or two of them is here this morning. <whistles> Lord have mercy. You never know what to, I've been to their house more than once. You knock on the door, the door flings open. And there's a little, he's about that high, but he's round. And he comes to the door in his birthday suit. The first day I went, whoa. And I, and, uh, and I said, Anthony, what in the world? He said, it happens a lot, preacher. I said, well, uh, you want to come to church tomorrow, buddy? Uh, and he, and he bring, I don't even know the kid's name. They come once in a while, I think two or three of them. And, uh, we, we have, I have seen bus kids places where there was a dead cat laid on the steps, uh, for two or three weeks. And you have to step over the dead cat, uh, to get, I mean, when you think after a few weeks going out there, you pick it up and sail it off down the, in the woods or something. I seen one one time. I was sitting there talking to some people and there was a kid sitting in the floor. And this kid was eating a bowl of uh, like Cheerios or something. And that was back when everybody had shag carpet. You remember when shag carpet, real thick carpet like that? It was nasty too, buddy. And that kid turned that bowl of cereal over in that carpet. And I was sitting there talking and watched that kid pick that them Cheerios out of that carpet. And was eating. I thought, oh my Lord, Dave, I don't even know if all them Cheerios you're eating. I mean, it might have been some squid. It might have been a bug. I'm really, I'm, I've, I've heard them. I've heard roaches hitting the floor like tick, 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 tick. You can hear them hitting the floor. Anybody ever heard them hitting the floor like that right there? Lord have mercy. I, and I just sort of just, well, uh, you know, I hope you can come to church tomorrow. I'm, I'm telling you, the Lord wants you to bring somebody else to him. I want to say tonight, the Lord wants us to reach Muslims. I know we have an attitude in our, in our country today that uh, a lot of people almost hate Muslim. And that's not right. They are people that Jesus died for also. They are in a false religion. They are following the devil. There's no doubt about that. But I'm telling you, they got a soul. I've heard preachers even uh, say, we ought to kill all them ragheads and, and stuff like that. Now, that makes good preaching. And everybody shouts. But I'm going to tell you something. That man that runs that convenience store, that man that runs that motel, and all that, that he's from another country and worship another God, he'll die and go to hell if somebody don't try to reach that man for the Lord Jesus Christ. They may not smell good. They may not may be nice. But I'm telling you, the Lord wants you to bring them. The Lord wants us to witness to uh, uh, other religions and Buddhists and Indians uh, that, that, that dot on their head and have other gods and atheists. 
Uh, you say, well, ain't no use talking to an atheist. Oh, yes, they are too. An atheist, uh, you know what I tell them? They say, I don't believe in God. And I say, God don't believe in atheists. And I say, he tell, that's right. He loves you. He loves you. God loves you. Let me tell you something, people. We've got the gospel, the power, uh, the power of the word of God. It's quick and powerful. You quote that book right there. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing. Pearson, the divine of son of soul and spirit, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Amen. I'm telling you, well, homosexuals, we ought to have a burden for them and witness for them and to them. I feel a little resistance right there, but it's true. They're people that Jesus died for. You say, there ain't no hope for them. They are for some of them. They are for some of them. No, I don't care if you get mad at me or not. I'm telling you tonight, brother, it's not right to hate people just because they commit a sin you ain't committed. I'm, I'm telling you, the Lord died for them. Somebody's they's kidding me about my shirt while ago. They said, that pink, I said, I don't know, I paid $3.99 for it. At Berlin, so I thought I'd wear it at least once. One preacher told me, he said, if you wear pink, don't that mean you're queer? And I said, if your wife wears blue, is she a lesbian? It's amazing how dumb some people are. That's stupidity. Amen. Takes a real man to wear something like him. Uh, and I'm going to tell you something tonight. Hallelujah. I wear it just to aggravate them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ought to say amen, preacher. Help yourself. We got a God that loves everybody. I'll wear a polka dot orange the next Sunday if I want to. The Lord wants you to bring others to him. Actually, I got this from Brother Jeremy. It's too little for him. He took Miss Desi a ride in the Batmobile. Have you heard about this, Michelle? Okay, I just want to make sure. Miss Desi rode in the Batmobile yesterday. Have y'all seen that Batmobile sitting out there? Go out there and look at it. Oh, you didn't bring it tonight. It was going to rain. He didn't want that thing to get wet. He took her 120 miles an hour up down the interstate yesterday. Evening. She's drunk, don't remember it. He's out to the business meeting last night. Man, it's amazing how much easier it is to preach when we ain't on that blessed internet. I don't know if we are or not. Are we? we are. <laughs> oh Lord, I'm just kidding. I'm telling you, I'm glad to be in the greatest service of the Lord. The Lord wants you. The Lord wants you. Listen, people, the world ain't getting no better. The mark of the beast is coming. The all hell's breaking loose. National wars, may, we may be in a war before we get home tonight. Oh, Kim Jong, whatever his name is, oh, yonder, might push a button. Putin, oh, yonder, they might make Donald Trump mad. He might make them mad. There's no telling what we're going to see in this world. There's no, listen, they're passing laws all the time trying to squish us and stop us from there. They have gated communities everywhere to keep you from visiting. And they're passing law after law after law after law to keep us from going into the communities and keep us from witnessing. And we better do it while we can. Better do it while we can. Number two, the Lord wants you as a worker in his church. Amen. The Lord wants you to do, be a worker in his church. I talked about that this morning, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here tonight. The church, uh, USA Today, different out, uh, media outlets are talking about how church attendance is falling off everywhere. Churches are dying. Now, when I first started preaching, there are thousands of little Baptist churches all over the South, and they were pretty good, a lot of them in those days. You could about get up and go to any one of them and hear the gospel preached. Forty years ago, you could about go to any Baptist and some other churches that are not Baptist and hear the Bible preached uh, 40 and 50. And 100 years ago, it, you could just about take your pick. Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, they'd preach the paint off the wall. And But little by little by little, that has changed. And over the past 20 years, all of those little older churches, they're dying off. And all the folks are getting old, and the and the younger generation has come up and said, 
we don't like this. They went to college and learned better. And then their kids didn't go. And all sitting in there about, uh, is, is 60 up to 80. And they're dying. Which means there are thousands. They're sitting empty. And here's what happened. Some little redneck goes off and, and uh, thinks he's a big shot and gets him a band. And he finds out, he said, man, I really like rock music. And they said, well, have you ever heard Christian rock? He said, no, what's that? And they put some Christian rock band in. He says, oh, cool. You mean we still get to listen to rock, but it's Christian? Oh, yeah. We can still have rock music, but it's all right with God? Yeah, it's Christian rock. So they get them a band, and then they go to the, uh, the deacon, and the pastor's 90 years old and won't retire, and there's 12 people sitting in there on Sunday morning, and they say, uh, we would like to uh, start meeting here. Is it all right with y'all? And they talk them into a deal where the old people come at 9 o'clock and get them out of the way in their traditional service, and then here come all the weirdos and the freaks at 11 and rock out for about an hour and a half and have weird lights shining all over the place and dim and everything looks like a nightclub, and and play rock music and they call it the, the the stand or the flower or the leaf or the tree or the or the bud or something like that and they say hey, it's cool this is church for people that one one I saw one advertised church for people that don't like church church for people who don't like church you know what that's saying you can come here and do whatever you want believe however you want dress however you want that don't matter and still call it church I'm going to tell you something here tonight. This is not a nightclub. This is not a contemporary church. This is not a rock and roll church. The centerpiece is still the pulpit here in this church. The main thing is the Word of God. We're not having a rock show. We're not having a rap show. I like what Phil Kidd said. Rap stands for retards attempting poetry. I'm telling you tonight, brother, I'm telling you here, this is God's house. We'll preach God's Word. And brother, if it hair lips grandma, we're still going to preach what the Bible says. The Lord wants you to be a worker in His church. You say, Brother Danny, what can I do? I'll tell you what you can do. Clean buses. Wouldn't it be a blessing if some of you that don't have nothing to do come up here on Tuesday night and just clean all the buses so that we can keep possums out of them? Look at the possums that run around out here at night looking for that pizza. They can smell it. They get up in there somehow or another. We can get rid of them. Wouldn't that be a blessing if somebody just had a ministry? You know what we've had before? I've seen ladies, they had their ministry was to cook for us. We had ladies who used to stay up every Saturday night and make cupcakes for the bus kids. Every Saturday night, come in that door right back there with 150 cupcakes and give all the bus kids a cup. Just a minute. The Lord wants you to be a worker in His church. Amen. There's something everybody can do. I mean, everybody can't play a guitar. Everybody can't preach. Everybody can't run. But there's something that everybody can do. The Lord wants you to be a worker in His church. Amen? The Lord wants you to be a worker in His church. I read about David Livingston, the great missionary to Africa. And David Livingston actually died. Uh, in Africa, you've heard me tell that story. I, I never, of course, that was a long time ago. But I have tremendous respect for those missionaries that went and gave their life on the mission field. Gave up America, live in Africa. Never saw his wife for three years. Never saw his wife for three years. And now there's husbands sitting in here tonight saying, I don't want you going on bus ride on Saturday. I want you with me. God, have mercy on your selfish soul. God, have mercy on somebody that's selfish. Hey, he never saw his wife for three years. Three years. And when he saw her, she said, I can't even tell you the bad news for the joy that I have of seeing your face. And they wrote to David Livingston and said, we've got some men who want to come down there and help you. And they will know if they're a good road in there to where you're at. And he wrote them back and said, tell them to forget it. He said, if they're wanting to know a good road in here, that ain't the kind of man I need anyway. He said, if, they, if they're called by God, they won't care what the road looks like. Right. Amen. 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 Right. Why do we have to have everything so easy and nice and comfortable for us? People, we're going to rest when we get to heaven. Yeah. 
going to rest when we get to heaven. Amen. You can't take it with you, but you can send it on ahead. You can take your money with you, but you can send it ahead. And it'll be waiting on you when you get there. That's right. You know, when you're in the wrong place, the right place is empty. You ever thought about that? When you're in the wrong place, the right place is empty. Amen. To work at things you love for those you love is to turn work into fun and duty to privilege. Right. Amen. The willing heart lightens the workload. Um, I'll say one or two more things here and I'm done. We're living in a generation of the biggest generation of crybabies this country's ever seen. I have never in my life seen people that wah, 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 wah every time. Do you know why there's so much protest and stuff in politics and in these big cities? Did you know that if a conservative, what what we'd call them actually, but they call them conservative because they have because they don't believe in gay marriage and abortion or something like that. When they go to a college campus to speak, especially out west in California, they are shouted down and booed down and sometimes violently, uh, uh, violence breaks out, and they say, no, no. And these are the people that preach about being tolerant. Now, the truth is they want us to be tolerant to their way. They don't want to be tolerant to ours. If they, if they wasn't big crybaby hypocrites, they'd sit right there like a grown-up and listen to the opposing view and let somebody out. And they don't have to agree with it. Listen, when Obama was president, I didn't hardly agree with nothing he did or said, but I supported him as my president. And I would honor him if he walked in that door and still would. You know why? I'm a mature adult. I don't agree with everything no president does. But to say, we'll kill him. We'll kill him, hang him upside down, cut his throat, all that. You are a big cry baby that is mad because things didn't go your way. The next election, they may not go our way. They ain't never went our way yet. I don't know why they'd start now. It ain't never been our way. We just keep whichever one's the worse, uh, but I'm uh, the better. Uh, but I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, church people should be more mature than to cry because everything don't go your way. I talked about that this morning. I ain't going to get on that again tonight. Last thing I'm saying, I'm done. The Lord wants you as a star in his crown. In Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3, the Bible said the Lord, one day when he makes up his jewels, he said, they that turn many to righteousness shall shine as the brightness of the star. Not sing in a group. Not worship with hill song. Listen, you, I could really hype it up in here if I wanted to. I could do these lights and have these lights shine like Hollywood and get that music going brilliant. You could change the whole atmosphere and it's real easy. That's not what God's interested in. When the music steals the show and people are dancing to it in a sensual matter, you done quit worshiping God and got into the flesh. You know what? God said, they that turn many to righteousness shall shine as the brightness of the stars forever. Forever. Sometimes you have to just get down in the trenches and dig and pray and work. Amen. I said years ago, these fourth graders done an experiment somewhere up north somewhere. I think it's up in Maine actually. And they they done them little experiments where they where they'd write something and put it in a bottle. You remember? And then throw it in the ocean. You remember? You've seen people do that. You put it in a bottle, put a cork in the end of it, and just throw it out in the ocean. And they did that. And three months later, two of them showed up in Canada. And two years later, one of them got a letter from France. France, brother that they had got that message out of that bottle and read it. And you know, the Bible over and over and over said, cast your bread upon the waters, but thou shalt find it after many days. I am a firm believer. If you'll witness, I've, I've been preaching long enough to see it come around now, Brother Ronnie. I, I, we get an email once in a while uh, from somebody, and they said, uh, they'd say, Brother Danny, you was preaching 20 years ago somewhere. And I heard the gospel and got saved. 
And here, I'm going I'm to send you church some money or something like that. Thou shalt find it after many days. You keep on witnessing. You keep on working. You keep on being faithful to church. Your kin folks might think you're crazy. They might think you're overboard. They think you're in a cult. They think you're brainwashed. They think, you know why they do that? Because their eyes are blinded. They can't see. They can't see. We're in the greatest work in the world, people. And the Lord wants you. The Lord wants you. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Don't nobody in here feel like that you're not good enough or smart enough or talented enough or well off enough for God to use you. She's going to play softly. You know what we need? We need a man just come up here once a week on just check the oil. Just check the oil. Make sure all the buses get. One of them was a gallon low the other day. Just stuff like that. Stuff like that. Preacher, just pay my tithes and be faithful and sing the choir and serve God. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Lord wants you. The Lord wants you. I hope he'll put his finger on you tonight. Just slip out of your seat and come on. Let's pray tonight. Meet me here at the altar. Some's coming. Others are coming. Others are coming. Let's just get out of our seat. You can say, Lord, whatever you want me to do. He ain't going to hurt you. God ain't going to hurt you. Whatever he wants you to do, it'll be all right. And you'll be better off for it. Amen. Amen. Let's get in this altar tonight. Come on. That's right. That's right. Come on. Let's get in the altar tonight. Serve God. He'll bless you for it. Amen. The Lord wants you, boys. The Lord wants you.